Greetings, Warlords. Welcome to Saga Thursday, the show all about the skirmish miniatures game from Studio Tomahawk. Joined by an old friend of the show, Chris. How's it going, Chris? Hey, Rog. It's going well. Good. So uh, we are going to be talking about uh, 3D printing and historicals in general. This was your idea. Thanks for bringing this up. So... You're welcome. People who uh, listen to the show regularly know that uh, I'm talking about 3D printing more and more, and I keep telling Monty I'm on the edge, I'm on the cusp of getting into it, but um, you know, there's so many other people getting into printing that you can always just ask those people to print a little stuff for you, so I've gotten uh, away with it so far, but um, yeah, I think the complexity and the bar has been been lowered that i think most if you could afford games workshop models i think you could definitely afford 3d printing (laughs) yes would you say so yeah we're going to talk a little bit about uh your background we'll get into some you know suggested beginner setups um you know i'm assuming there's a lot we could get into there we'll get into the historical manufacturers so the kind of the or the creators i should say so that'll be the kind of the saga slant and then you were actually saying some interesting things about building a community with your your 3d printing setup so i'm really curious to hear about that but let's go ahead and dive in so um you've done how many faction reviews have you done? Just one or two or more? I think two. Two. Okay. Yeah. And I know you've been on talking about the, um, you know, Polish Grand Melee previously yep. as well. So you've been on a few times. Um, have you been into 3D printing since since the beginning? Yeah. I guess, you know, it's probably five, six, seven years ago that 3D printing really started in the miniature kind of hobby space i don't know what what, what's your introduction there yeah i got into 3d printing about two um just under two years ago uh right after i moved back to the to the states from poland um basically yeah i moved back a month or two later got my 3d printer um set up and started cranking out minis okay cool and i think that that's cool to hear so you in less than two years you've gone from not having a setup to getting everything and then now you feel comfortable enough that you, you want to come on and you know become a i wouldn't i'm sure you wouldn't say you're a 3d printing expert but you're putting yourself out there as someone who you feel comfortable enough talking about it and knowledgeable is that is that right yeah, I I would not say I'm a 3D printing um, printing expert as of yet. There are, uh, I mean, even a few of the pe- few of the guys in the Puzz Nine crew. Shout out to to Shafa in particular, who quite knowledgeable on this. But there are other people I know who are been doing this as long or longer as I have. Um, I have figured out how to, um, you know, print out minis at a decent pace to paint and to game with so mm-hmm. yeah i i mean kind of my thing is i want to show i want to try and simplify the process for people as much as possible awesome well yeah i think that's a good goal so we are taking a look it looks like we are i've got some of your your models that you've already uh printed up here so these look uh the first one here are these mass macedonians uh we're looking at or greeks Mm -hmm. yep yeah um the yeah those are those are the uh yeah the pikemen and um i think that it's the pikemen right yep some pikemen some calf looks like a general hanging out back there Yep. yeah that's kind of my success well successor slash macedonian slash potentially pyrrhic army Mm-hmm. Yep, we're always that's good up. for multi-use war bands and saga. So that's great. These guys look great. Uh, up next, um, suffice it to say, um, if you're looking for uh, fantasy miniatures, they're I'm assuming whatever historical. There's ten times that available. So we're looking at some Lord of the Rings dwarves here. I, 
Now, I think for your horde, you were using Lord of the Rings orcs, mm -hmm. weren't you? If I if I remember correctly. Yep. Yep. Also, yeah, like the dwarves, they're sculpted from Medbury miniatures. Okay. Yeah. Uh, his Lord of the Rings stuff is uh, amazing, and he's he's friend friend of the oh, show. Supports yep. Saga huh? Thursday, and then uh, very good. Yep, he's yeah he does some amazing sculpts. I uh, I have so many of uh, files of his sculpts downloaded. <laughs> I one of these days I'll get around to printing all of them, but you know, no worries. And then now we're looking at. Persians, or I think is the chariot here. What's the four horse chariot? Is this a Persian chariot or an Indian? Yeah, that's chariot? a yeah, that's a Persian chariot. I'm probably gonna try it out. I think the I want to say the Asiatic successors in the um, Age of Alexander book can also take it. So I'll probably yep. try it out at some point. I think so yeah. too. Yeah, and then I think we're looking at the rest of your persians and so i mm -hmm. know you've done some archers for our, our paint competition so that's kind of the first that i saw yep. mm -hmm. of what you were looking on and um yeah they look good i like you know we there are a couple different styles out there i know are these scrofa miniatures for the persians or a, no that no they're not scrofa they're um well you would know who who did the who do who are your persians yeah, so the Macedonians and the Persians, um, those are all done by 3D breed, um, 3D breed miniatures. 3D breed, okay. Cool. Yeah, they did like a massive Kickstarter um, Greek and Persian Wars in 15 and 28 millimeter. Um, I think it was, I want to say it was, it was earlier this year, it was like in April. But yeah, for I think, 35 euro so about like 40 45 dollars you got a hundred plus miniatures um between like the greeks the persians the macedonians um yeah there was a lot okay yeah these 3d breed skulls they look they're they're cool because um they're kind of they're a little chonkier they're different than the other mm -hmm sculpts and but but the way that they print out they look like like traditional like metal historical models they don't mm -hmm. they don't like look chonky you know where the i think you know you're used to when you're looking at these stl five you know they're sexy like human proportion uh 3d sculpts and a lot of them are following that style and these are distinctly different but then when you print them out mm -hmm. you know they yeah, they just look like the the metal models that you're you're used to seeing. Um, yeah, you know, if you took all your historical miniatures and scanned them and looked at them in a three D, mm -hmm. you know, they look a little chonky, but they they look great, great all printed out. Um, yeah. So definitely yeah. The, those three D breed don't mm -hmm. let them uh, throw you off. So I guess it would be good, and I think you've kind of touched on it a little bit. So why? Why, why should someone get into 3D printing? If you're a historical gamer, you primarily play Saga. Um, what, what's, I don't know, what's what's the pitch there, would you say? Mm -hmm. So I think the first reason, um, if where you're living doesn't have, uh, if you don't have a, a friendly local local gaming store that does a lot of historical minis um then 3d printing is a good that's a good that's a reason to get into 3d printing because you know ordering stuff online that's an option but you have to, you know depending on where it's coming from some things might not be in stock or you might not or you might have to wait a bit so yeah there can so accessibility for miniature of the miniatures that's access to the miniatures that's definitely a reason to do 3d printing um i think i would say that it also we'll get to this later but having it's easier to create a community around saga um if you're in a place that doesn't where you can't get historical miniatures like metal or plastic ones very easily Mm -hmm. that's another thing yeah that, that's a great point um as far as 
you know, if you're going to a Warhammer or something, you can just head down there, buy the stuff off the shelf. Where with Saga and historical game, there's like this extra hurdle where you got, well, you know, you, you could check eBay, you know, Badger Games is a good source. You know, they, they mm-hmm. might have what you're looking for or, or you can yeah. just order directly from them from Europe. And, you know, you, you have good luck, but you got to wait six weeks for it. So, yeah, that's a that's a great point. Yeah. Plus, another one, and I'm sure this is a problem we've all dealt with. I know I certainly have. It's a... It's very frustrating when you... Let's say you need... I don't know. When you need 24 figures to make your uh you know to make your war band you need three points of warriors for yep, example that's kind three of points of lights starting point and 20 coming everything a box so yeah, 24 you know, warriors very, yeah so that's a very that's a definitely a solution to the problem so you can you can print out as many as you need um you can makes it easier to try out like different op, different options for your lists if you want to if you want to see how would this list work if I added, you know, if I swap two hearth guard for four warriors or something like that, it's a lot easier to do that when you can just print out what you need. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, I like the idea of just printing exactly yeah. what you need and not. I'm sure if, if I had a printer, you know, I would be wanting printing stuff all the time. But I like the idea yeah. of just having exactly what you need. Theor- theoretically at the time and then not having a bunch of sprues and boxes sitting in the basement. Um, yeah. But I'm sure that's probably not realistic. You probably end yeah. up printing a lot of stuff just to, uh, you know, have it, have it ready because I think mm-hmm. another reason is it now historical miniatures are pretty cheap, but um, mm-hmm. is printing comes out even cheaper. And I think me and Monty, did a little analysis of this in as our saga expensive video, but mm-hmm. um, how much would you say? You know, you've got the the setup or whatever already, which we're going to get into. Um, but generally, how much does it cost to get the files, and then how much resin or goop you know mm-hmm. are you using to print it all out? Would you say what would like an average army run? For example, I'm sure there's a big spread there, but just mm-hmm. just hit me with something. So, I'm, do you want? I mean, do you want the? Do you want me to include the setup cost of the of the printer as well? No, or we'll we'll ignore that for now. Just just the because okay. that'll be your your setup cost, yeah. you know, your sunk cost. But just once you're going, okay. how much does it cost for a war band to get the files, and then how much mm-hmm. to actually print out with the raw material? Okay, um, so with the raw materials, I would say a bottle of resin, which is about a liter and costs twenty five to thirty bucks. So you could probably get. This is where the this is where where if I, I get this wrong I'm gonna have angry com- angry comments saying wow. saying that he's full of crap but no um I think I could probably get one and a half to two war bands out of a bottle of resin depending on if they're mostly infantry okay if it's kind of your average infantry mostly warriors a point and a half to two points of hearth guard and a point of levies i've done i'm sure that at least once i've printed out like i've printed out two war bands before needing to open up um two war bands worth of miniatures before needing to open up another bottle of resin okay I'm, so i'm pretty sure i'm 90 yeah, percent sure of that if someone thinks i'm you know if someone thinks i'm bsing feel free to comment yes. but that's been my experience. I'm going to say, yeah, I think this one's going to get a lot of comments because whenever 
anybody starts talking about 3D printing anything at events now, I hear, you know, almost half of the players chime in with their, you know, they have their printers and they have their perspective and their feedback. So I feel like we'll have a lot of people chiming in with their yeah. thoughts on everything through, through throughout this whole thing. So, yeah, uh, yeah I wouldn't but, worry about that. Yeah. Plus the other thing, if you have any, if you have larger models and I'm talking the chariot, like the chariots weren't actually that bad because, um, I mean that, yeah, the chariots weren't, weren't that bad, but for example, I've printed an elephant, like I've printed a full mm -hmm. 28 millimeter elephant for my, for, um, a Carthaginian war band. And something like that sucks a lot of resin. It takes. It really does. But it takes a lot. But yeah, yeah, and yeah. So I would say about ten to fifteen dollars for the resin for a warband and the files. Um, <sighs> files can vary. Um, sure, there's like Patreon type subscriptions yeah. that that people frequently get. You know. Uh, Medbury Miniatures and Reconquer Designs are the two that support yeah. the show. But you can also just go like my mini factory and you can buy, mm -hmm. you know, buy the STLs as one off exactly what you need. You know, it's like they're more expensive compared to the Patreons, but, you know, the Patreons yeah. every month and you'll probably end up with stuff that you're not necessarily interested in. But, yeah, um, you just kind of accumulate them. Um, yeah. So there are kind of two, I would say there are kind of two extremes in terms of the cost of the files. One is buying the files um, individually and off of my mini factory or something like that. And for example, let's say, you know, I, if I wanted to do, I'm very tempted by doing either a Frankish warband from Scrofa Miniatures or a um or a, like a thracian warband from them and i would need three or four sets of miniatures to do that each of those is i think about eight dollars a eight dollars a set so you know 30 that's about 30 to 35 bucks to do the one warband the other extreme of that is for example, if you back a Kickstarter, like uh, 3D Breed did a Kickstarter back in April um, when you had, I think, about 100 files, uh, 100 different miniatures to print for about um, 35, I think 35 to $40, okay. and you had stuff for Greeks, including per, uh, Athenians, Spartans, Thebans, but also uh, um, Macedonians, Persians. You know, you could do a good chunk of the Age of Alexander and Age of Hannibal books just off of that Kickstarter for thirty-five dollars for the files. Okay. That's the other thing. So, and then yeah, yeah, it runs the gamut, and yeah, I guess. You know, I have seen those Kickstarters too as another source. So oh. it kind of depends on your timing. And yeah. I, you know, my mini factory, I've seen they do bundle deals and stuff from mm -hmm. time to time. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of like Steam sales, uh, you know, for, for video game yeah. folks. No. So um, you can get them cheap if you're, you're patient or at the right time. But if you, yeah. you know, are starting something pronto and just want it you know buy those files yeah. that'll be the most expensive option um, but then i think a good middle option a lot of times is supporting um supporting a patreon and i've supported like i support the medbury miniatures Patre patreon quite often and that you know because you get in one month usually for like about ten dollars or something you know eight to ten dollars i think with uh, depending on the Patreon, you get a, a range of miniatures. You might get half of what you need for a warband in one month for about like eight to ten dollars, and then the same amount, and then you know the other half of your warband the next month for eight to ten dollars. So that can be a good option as well. Cool. So yeah, sounds like the, the files cost more than the actual materials. Uh, I guess that yeah. last component, time. How long mm -hmm. would it take you to print 
print a war band's worth of troops. Again, this is a one where you can have a lot of variation. Mm -hmm. People, different people have their own method of doing it. Um, usually I can do one print a day. Um, if I can usually do one plate of miniatures a day. So I put it on before I go to bed. It prints overnight the next, you know, the next day. Before I go to bed, I you know go out to the go out to the workshop, clean off the plate, um, clean um, yeah clean the minis, put them out to dry, leave them to dry overnight, put on the next print. So I can do I can fit I can fit uh, between eight to twelve miniatures on a on the plate of my printer. So that's a point of warriors. Um, or a point and a half of warriors, mm -hmm. a point of levy, um, or three points of hearth guard if they're on foot. <laughs> um, half that, honestly, if they're um, about half that if they're if the models are mounted. Mm -hmm. So you know, I could conceivably three, two points of hearth guard, a warlord. Three um, three points of warriors and a point of levy, I could conceivably do that in four prints, which you know four days if I was doing one print every day. Awesome, so, yeah, not not too shabby. So um, you know it's going to beat beat most shipping for online stuff. Not yeah, as fast yeah, as going yeah. to your hobby shop and picking it off the shelf, but. Um, you know, most places don't necessarily have a lot of historical mm -hmm. selection. And at this point, when they're printed, they're already, I mean, there's a little bit of work that needs to be done, but they're mm -hmm. essentially assembled, typically. And, uh, you know, they're a lot closer to being ready to paint as compared to a box of Victrix or a, mm -hmm. sorry, a bag of Victrix or a similar plastic yeah. kit. Um, yeah. even, even metals, you know, we'll take some cleanup. Yeah. Work. So cool. So yeah, I think the, and, the cost on, uh, real quick. I know I'm, I, there we go. Sorry. I didn't reckon with the fact that the sun's going down a little bit. Oh yeah. No worries. All right. Well, we are taking a look at the any cubic photon mono two. So Mm -hmm. um, you shared this with me. Now this this looks like it's two two hundred bucks. Is that mm -hmm. is that right? So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Over the the years, you know, there's been different technologies. There's FDM and resin stuff. I, I think the resin is um, kind of the latest wave where people are doing high quality prints mm -hmm. and i think these used to be thousands or 500 bucks up uh, to 200 bucks is yeah is uh reasonable so is this is this what you have or what you would get now knowing what you know i mean that's the one that i have i i actually couldn't find on the website the one but that's from what i can tell that's the next generation up from mine so that okay. is gonna be a um I mean, it's gonna. It's a higher resolution printer, so the print quality could be should pro, should be better. I think it. I think it said it's a 4K printer, from what I remember. Um, okay. which is generally higher, uh, which is generally better. Um, it's. I think the dimensions yeah. are a little bit larger than what I have, but it's basically yeah, it's the next step up, and um, that's what I probably. That's what I would. That's the one I would get today. Um, and who knows if I have room for it? I, it's the one I may get at some point. <laughs> in the yeah. Future. Well, I've heard that. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. There's a uh, half the guys I know with a printer have one, and then the other half have two or more, and they're just yep. going to town on stuff. Um, yeah. So, all right, we've got. A printer here and I think this is one where we'll see a lot of comments for other suggestions out there mm -hmm. um, yeah Elegoo Mars or Elegoo like Mars Elegoo uh, okay. Saturn yeah. that's any the, cubic and Elegoo those are kind of the two 
those are the two like main companies from what uh from what i remember okay so in addition to the the actual printer itself what other kind of things and contraptions i know there's baths or uh i don't know if it's a light bath Mm -hmm. or an actual bath bath or uh, what else do you need okay so with the only other the other piece of equipment that i've gotten like a i don't know professional one or professional like a or a I went with a um, a curing box from Elegoo. This is one of, this is like one piece of equipment. Theoretically, you can make it yourself. Like I, when I started, I um, had like a foil, a foil covered cardboard box and in a a UV flashlight. But um, basically the, after the miniatures are, uh, clean, like they're rinsed, all the, you know, excess resin gets rinsed off of it. They need to be, um, they need to be cured with, um, with UV light to make sure that the resin is completely set and that it's not going to transfer and get stuff. And cause you know, the uncured resin is toxic. You don't want it on your skin. So the sure. way you make sure you deal with that is with post curing. You can do a lot of different there are a lot of homegrown remedies for this. Um, you can leave the miniatures out in the sun. Uh-huh. May or may not for some people. Um, <laughs> not so scientific, but hey, uh, no. I mean, it, it's no. It. I mean, it is scientific. It, it works. Wow. It's just not. You know, it's, it's not pretty sunny out there. I guess maybe over. around here. It, it's a little cloudier. Yeah. But but then that you can like you can try and rig something up with with. Uh, uv lights or like a uv flashlight or something honestly i've found that just a a uv curing box with a turntable it saves a lot of hassle and it yeah it's a good piece of kit to have so that's the that and then you basically you need a setup for um you need a setup for um, cleaning the plate, cleaning the miniatures. So one thing that it, it's good to have in front of your printer is a silicon, like a they call it a, a slap mat. It's you just put it in front of the printer, and that's going to prevent any you know resin and other stuff from getting on whatever table or surface you're putting it on. Okay. And then um, ideally, you want uh, for cleaning the miniatures i've got really simple setup and that is just a pickle like a pickle jar with a basket in it um that the the jar is filled with i with um isopropanol um isopropyl isopropanol alcohol Mm -hmm. um you pour the you know you you dunk the minis in it um you know swish it up and down a little bit just to knock off the excess resin then I put the miniatures in another tub. Again, just leftover lo- leftover tub from some pickles from t- Trader Joe's. Um, <laughs> you know, put it. Put the. Um, I have the have the the minis in this tub of water. Put that in the curing box, and then have the have the UV light um, light do the post do the post curing, and then I put it on a tray on some paper towels to dry and that's it and then oh yeah you also want a your 3d printer will come with a plastic um with a plastic scraper to get minis off the off the plate that's useless Uh. get a metal (laughs) just ditch the plastic one it's gonna it's gonna like just notch and deform within a couple of uses don't bother ditch it get a metal one okay yeah and then like a and then a spatula for um a spatula for just like a a, again like a rubber silicon spatula for um cleaning the plate cleaning cleaning the resin vat stuff like that and then usually like paper towels isopropanol wipes and 
you're going to want uh, nitrile gloves, either disposable or more. The better option is to get some multi-use nitrile gloves, like for gardening or chemical handling or something. Mm-hmm. Sorry, that was and that was my exhausted <laughs> exhausted. No, list. it's good to yeah to hear all that stuff because you don't want to have somebody just buy the printer and think, you know, all right, yeah. it's time time to go. You know, let's let's do it and not have yeah. that stuff there. So all that extra miscellaneous stuff, um, how much would that stuff run? Just to. So the printer's two hundred. How much more mm-hmm. would you need to spend? You know, just roughly to kind of get yourself kitted out. I would say printer's two hundred. Um, the curing box is gonna be is gonna run about fifty. The the mat the. Um, spatula the gloves the um that that stuff i would say probably is going to add up to about 50 and then you probably want another 50 for an extra bottle of resin and some uh some spare parts like specifically uh uh, fep film for the bottom of the print vat um so just make sure you have a few extra of those that would probably run you another 50. So for about 350 bucks, you would have, you know, that, that would, that should do all right for a 350 being more conservative, 400, 350 to $400 should be a, a decent, uh, a decent, um, starting setup. Okay, cool. Yeah. Great for a first run there. And I'm sure, you know, um, you know, you can get uh, higher quality stuff or, or bigger stuff mm-hmm. and spend more yeah. if you want. And I think with the, the printers, you know, if you want to print more stuff at the same time, you know, that's where, mm-hmm. where the cost is going to go up. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So as far as the, I'm kind of a, a late adopter type of person here and don't like troubleshooting and stuff like that. You talked about spare parts. So I know, you know, kind of go back to the beginning of 3d printing and stuff. You'd hear a lot about people jiggering with files and stuff and trying to get them set up. And, yeah. uh, you know, and then once it was printed, you know, you've, you know, there's stuff wrong is this part's droopy what's going on or, um, you know, it's just not printing right or something like that. So, um, I guess, what would you say to <laughs> somebody yeah. who, who is, doesn't look forward to that kind of stuff and will kind of use it as a reason not to do it is, I guess, how, how much troubleshooting and kind of stuff have you had to do in your two years? Yeah. So there are two variables that are... There, there are two variables that you can really control that are going to affect whether your prints come out consistently or not. One of them is whether you've got the settings on your printer dialed in, and basically when you when you slice or prepare the miniatures for printing, you're going to need to set things like um, the going to need to set how high you want each layer to be, which that'll show that's like that. That'll determine whether you have layer lines on the miniatures. But, um, so like the height of the, the layer height, the, um, exposure time, like how long each layer will be exposed to light before printing the next one, how high or how fast the platform is raised after printing each layer, stuff like that. And, the basic the best way to do it and the way i've done it is look around on 3d printing groups or um see if you can and like see if you can tell a lot of people will a lot of people will have um 
just a list of different settings for different resins. I found one like mm. that at the beginning and I, I kind of experimented with it from there. Um, so that's kind of, you know, dialing in the settings. It's kind of one of those things that once you, once you figure it out, once you figure out good settings for the re resin that you're using, then it should, you know, that'll help, that'll help your prints to come out consistently. And you, you know, once you figure out the settings, you can fine tune them if you want and try and get better results, uh, you know, mm -hmm. crisper quality, um, smoother, you know, smoother, like, um, try and reduce the visibility of any layer lines or anything like that. But, you know, that, you don't have to if you don't want to go that deep into it. But basically, once you get the si settings dialed in, you can keep them pretty much the same. I don't. Once I dialed in the settings, I don't think I've changed them in at least six months. Okay. So they just. I found the settings that work, and they consistently crank out miniatures. Awesome. So it you know that the other variable is supports. So when you have mm -hmm. each the when you have each layer printed occasionally you'll have things that are kind of for lack of a for example the tip of a sword um wait let me think I'm trying to think of an example here yeah so something sticking um, out like and it, like something sticking out the for resin is time, pliable it's gonna be or a, yeah island almost it's got it's not going to be connected with the rest of the miniature and that could that's where the print could potentially fail or that part could just not print out correctly so you have a support it's kind of a it's support you'll have like a scaffolding connecting the the miniature to like the 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 base of the print bed so that everything okay. is connected somehow and everything prints out correctly you can try adding supports manually. You can add them in your slicer. Honestly, easiest, especially if you're just starting out, I would say don't bother with slice with adding supports yourself. Get okay. pre-supported miniatures as much as possible. And most of the main, most of the big, um, most of the really good miniature designers offer miniatures in supported and pre-supported sure. version if you get the pre-supported ones as long as you get the as long as you get the settings done right your minis should print out consistently without too much hassle awesome so there's a little so bit of my, anyway a little bit of fast troubleshooting just kind of getting mm -hmm. everything worked out in the beginning and then once yeah. it's set up you should have good luck after that so cool well, yeah, thanks for giving us the rundown on that. So, um, you know, obviously this, if you're getting into this, this video, you know, we're just kind of giving an overview. So what are, are there Facebook groups or like a 3D printing YouTuber or something? Mm -hmm. or like, what do you, what's a good resource for you and Ooh. your journey? Yeah. So I have, I mean, I... I did so I, I you know I found some videos basically just by entering just, how to do X mm -hmm. with pre printing on YouTube and I found a lot of stuff that way. Um, when I first started, I think I was um, I was actually printing six millimeter stuff for like um, Epic Armageddon <laughs> and War Master and <laughs> stuff like. That. So I found some, a lot of the, the settings the mm -hmm. like list of settings I found originally were actually from a group specialized for that. But then I kind of, you know, tweak things on my own and figured out how to print uh, larger minis. Yeah. But I know there's a, if you're in, into, into age of, if you're looking to print stuff for age of magic, then I know there is a, uh, 3D printing. I know there's a 3D, a Lord of the Rings, uh, Middle Earth 3D printing group. Um, 
I think a lot of the miniature designers are going to have their own Facebook group. That's all. I, I'd mm-hmm. say that's always a place where it's worth, um, ca- you know, casting a net out or casting a yeah, seeing if you can get someone to answer your question. But there are so many groups out there. Honestly, just do a search on Facebook and you'll definitely find something. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot out there. You're just not using yeah. any any one in particular. Mm-hmm. Got it. All right. So let's move on to uh, some of the historical creators out there. So first up, and I mentioned this one earlier, Scrofa Miniatures. Mm-hmm. And um, we're looking at a picture of some uh, Thracians with their... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Their big chopper. I can't think of what the name is. Falks. Is that? Uh, it? Rumpaya, I think it was. Yeah, I can't, can't remember the name of it. But uh, so, Scrofa here. Um, do you do you have any personal experience with Scrofa? Not yet, but um, there. I definitely. I'm. I'm probably gonna. I. Not yet, but I want to. I definitely want to try printing out some of those, uh, some of their Thracians at some point. So, I, um, they're on my shopping list. So I'll put it that Absolutely. way. Absolutely. So yeah, these guys got Indians. They have these Thracians yep. here. Mm-hmm. Um, they have some Franks, yep. humans, the Mongol drummer. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yep. So they've just got a variety. Yeah, of they're they're beautiful names. So yeah, these these look really good. Uh, moving on, we've got well, the three. One of the things that I I love about it is that from when Age of Alexander came out, the only I think you had the only source for Thracian. I mean, you you had metal Thracians available. I think like um, war, uh, uh, the you had Gripping Beast, you had um, Warlord games, but you didn't have plastic Thracians. And so if you wanted to build a Thracian warband, tricky. Now you can build a Thracian warband pretty easily. And, and that's true. So, yeah, they've actually filled a need in some ways with the Thracians okay. and then also with the Indians. Um, yep. So there's also, two different, you know, so they have Indians and you have your Indians. Um, from 3D Breed, and the Indians were a little difficult to find, or you know they're limited. Um, I don't think Indi- 3D Breed. Do- I don't think 3D Breed does Indians. They uh, had- okay, I'm confused. Then, yeah. So, oh. but uh, Scrof- Scrofa definitely does. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Basically, at this point, between Scrofa and 3D Breed and a few other ones, the entirety of Age of Alexander is covered in. 3D printable miniatures, I think. Awesome. All right. So, yeah, a lot of good stuff there. Moving on to Medbury miniatures, front mm-hmm. of the show. So, yeah, I've been watching his stuff lately. So, he's definitely got a ton of kind of medieval stuff, is kind of for his historicals, mm-hmm. kind of where he started. Um, so, we're looking at some Scottish sergeants with spears. Um, do you know, like, the extent? Uh, so there's Scots, I'm assuming English. Um, what like other nations might be as far as his medievals go? Do you know offhand? Yeah. Um, let me think. So got those two. Um, he has a whole um, a whole range of sort of, I forget if it was, I think it was 6th sixth, sixth to ninth century or 6th to 8th, I think it was 6th to ninth century Anglo-Saxons that came out on his Patreon, that came out on his Patreon over the last several months. Um, oh, yeah, and so he's got those guys, and then he's kind of got, yep. you know, the Vendel oh. era, got, you know, yep. they probably look more like what we think of mm-hmm. as Vikings to, to most people, but yeah. Vendel era yep. Saxons slash Scandinavians. So yeah, he's got yeah. a lot of medieval kind of stuff. Between age of invasions and age of Vikings, I reckon. Yeah. And actually, so you know, we mentioned his Lord of the Rings stuff, uh, you know, depending on your, t- you know, obviously if you want to use them for age of magic, they're, they're brilliant, but I think like the Rohan stuff, 
I mean, mm -hmm. we've, we've seen people use them for historicals. I'm like, I oh yeah, they, they yeah. look good. I, I think you could you they, get get yeah. get by with them for for quite a few factions using the Rohan stuff too. Yeah, no, I mean, he one of the things I really love about his Lord of the Rings stuff, he's really leaned into the um historically. He's really leaned into the aesthetic that inspire that most likely, I think most likely inspired J.R. Tolkien's vision, which was the bio tapestry. I'm pretty like I, I'm pretty sure Tolkien was asked once, just flat out, where you know, what did the Wars of Gondor or Rohan look like? And he basically said like the Bayo tapestry. So mm -hmm. he's kind Medbury's definitely embraced that. Like the Rohirrim look very kind of Norse or Anglo-Saxon, the Gondorians, they kind of 10th to 12th century Norman. They they're look just yeah. Good. You know, they they're good. You know, they're right in line kind of with the original GW sculpts, which in a lot of mm -hmm. cases were fairly tame compared to their fantasy stuff is like low fantasy um stuff yeah. with the hair dream and, and stuff like that so they're perfectly compatible so they're just kind of the low fantasy book version not yeah. necessarily the the movie version of everything mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah. yeah he's awesome i think he also has some norman i think he also has some straight up norman knights as well so you could probably get some stuff for age of vikings out of that absolutely all right, moving on to Reconquer Designs. So Marcos over there, he's done a ton. So his original focus was Spain and the Reconquista. So the, the more Muslim side of things and then the Christian factions, the Spanish. And so I know he's done um, a lot of that medieval area era for both of those. And he has done some some Visigoths that, that look really cool, but he's only done a, a couple of those. And I know now he's dabbling with some fantasy stuff. Have you ever picked up any Reconquer stuff? Not yet. They're on the shopping list. Okay. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I know people definitely have used these for Normans as well. Those, those kind of oh, early yeah. knights in, in chain mail and, you know, any one of those Muslim factions. Uh, probably work. Um, even though I think the Saracens are kind of meant to be more Turks, but mm -hmm. um, you know, saga historicalness questionable at times. You know, and we're okay with I that. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, saga is kind of it's one of those things. Historic it, saga being a historical war game, it is what you make of it. Like there are people who get really detailed into it mm -hmm. and there are people who don't and you know both is good absolutely so a lot of great options there uh moving on this one i hadn't seen before so this is um esquis miniatures mm -hmm. um, yeah now we're looking at saxon horsemen here but i think they do franks as well, or mm -hmm. Carolingians? Carolingians, yeah. Okay. Um, are those the, the main ones that they have currently? They've got a lot of a lot of different stuff. They've got the ones I can say say offhand are Carolingians, Anglo Saxons, slash Anglo Danes, and Vikings. But then I know they've also got, I think they've also got um, Republican Romans and Carthaginians. Oh, okay. So and then like a lot of World War II. Yeah, American I was Civil War, trying to look. Of, He's got a ton of bolt action. So I'm assuming like bolt action is probably off the hook yeah. for 3D yeah. prints and stuff. Um, oh, oh, yeah. There's a ton of stuff out there. Um Okay, cool. Yeah, it looks like he's got some Vikings mm -hmm. as well. So that's cool to see. Uh, what else? So this is a 3D breed then. We're looking uh, March to Hell. 
stuff. So he's got these ancient stuff. We're just looking at the Carthaginian army here. Uh, but I think you were saying they've got quite a few of them covered mm -hmm. in the ancient times. And it looks like medieval as well. Yep. Yeah, they've, they've got a full... Um, they have a full um, range for Spanish and Moors, um, which I kind of want to... kind of want to redo want to add some stuff to my Spanish army and start a Moorish army some point probably going to do it but um, mm. they did a they also did an English and Scots um, Robert the Bruce uh, Kickstarter a few months back uh, but uh, that all those minis will probably show up on their web store at some point but they're not there oh, just cool. yet yeah that's awesome yeah oh. Moors Spanish yeah uh, yeah, they've got a, a wide variety there, and these, this is this is what your Persians are. This company here was that yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, my my Persians, my Macedonians, uh, some of my Greeks as well, and like a bunch of different options for mercenaries, mm -hmm. and my Romans actually. I I did like a I did a Roman war band off of these guys as well. Awesome, Republican Roman. All right. Next up, we have Atlantic Digital. So Atlantic War Games, uh, you know, they're a source of plastic kits. Um, and I guess I just found out this summer that they're doing the pretty heavy in the STL and 3D printing space. And the, the cool thing here is like they're they're built out like they're sprues. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, so we're looking yeah. at the picks right here and the heads are separate and the arms yeah. are separate. So would you... Have you printed those? Would you print them like separate and then like glue them together, or do you like digitally glue them together? Or I, yeah, I think like I'm really tempted by this set. Um, I've always wanted to do a Pictish warband for. Um, I mean, they work well for picks, but I could also use them to uh, refresh my Welsh warband as well. So there's that, but. Um, yeah, I think they could honestly printing out a bunch of components um that to me sounds and assembling them printing and cleaning and curing and drying and mm -hmm. then still having to assemble <laughs> a bunch of individual components to me sounds kind of like a massive pain in the in the behind so okay yeah i would i i know there are ways to like people can there are programs i think like blender mesh mixer where you can you know modify miniatures or take components and put them together you can do that i haven't tried it but i think that's the route i would go i'd want to assemble a solid miniature digitally first and then print it rather than you know printing out the components individually yeah that's part of the part I, of the charm is you're uh, kind of in some ways done with assembly once it's it's printed you can even put them on bases you know yeah you, you don't even have to put them on a base if you just print the base with it so yeah i'm looking at their side right now they got ottoman armored infantry mm -hmm. you know so that's a little layer maori monks vikings trojan war sea peoples some Irish yep. stuff, picks, mm -hmm. um, quite a bit, yeah. Wow, that <laughs> just for yeah, this tab here has quite a bit of stuff. Um, <laughs> shield maidens, yep. and they've got a lot. Yep. More. So they've been they've been busy with with this aspect of their business. Uh, must be working yep. working well for them because uh, the yeah. the plastic kits have really slowed down. Uh, but I th I thought I heard you know if if the 3D, if the SDLs are popular enough, that's like a signal to them that they'll make a plastic kit. But yeah, um, well, that's a uh, sensible. I, I mean, it's I don't a know sensible. if that's translated into any yeah. kits here, but um, yeah, if the choice is between, you know, I'm looking at two pages, 25 different little sets, 
yeah. versus you know if they had done five plastic kits during that same time period yeah yeah um, all this variety is really cool so yeah. yeah another one to to think up um mm -hmm. and so this last one so this is a picture you sent me it just says welcome historical fantasy welcome box what what is this one gosh which one so it's the last one you sent me and it just says fantasy and historical welcome box and it's looking like uh there's some orcs on there and some kind of roman ish kind of western romans last romans there's a castle and oh stuff. oh the, so yeah this, yeah uh, like another patreon or, or what is this one it doesn't it doesn't have whatever their, their name is yeah so that's yeah oh, okay it doesn't have the oh sorry <laughs> i should have mentioned that yeah that's that's Diwali games um they're primarily a fantasy miniatures one um, I am planning on getting the supporting the Patreon on this month because like it's got a you know the welcome box you basically apart um, you know you've got some cool looking goblins in there some nice terrain but you've also got um, some late ro you, you've got some late Romans and I don't think they're shown in this picture but they're they are included in the in the welcome box. You also have Huns, so you have, I think, oh, in the welcome okay. box, you have figures to do to print out a Roman and a Hunnic warband, which that That's would cool. be pretty. Sweet. Yeah, finding those step tribes that are appropriate for the specific uh, tribe, mm -hmm. you know, can be can be can be yeah. difficult. So that's good. Also, yeah. So, so what was the name of these guys again? Uh, Davala Games. That's D A V A L E. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. So um, that is it for historical miniatures, as far mm -hmm. as uh, you're aware and, and I'm aware. Now, the cool thing is, it seems like every six months or so, a new one is like popping popping online so yeah you know, there's so many fantasy options out there and finally we're starting to see historical stuff so i would say you know reconquer was kind of the first one that i saw in mm -hmm. midbury as well uh so those guys are the ogs but all these other ones you mentioned are pretty pretty new to me mm -hmm. and oh yeah uh, within six months or so um there'll be new ones and then the other thing too like i think on my mini factory there's just like random stuff <laughs> like there's like one-offs of lots of different things and mm -hmm. that it includes historical type type miniatures yeah. as well so you never know what you'll you'll find it you know sometimes there's just free free files on there yeah um, yeah there's the if you're looking for free stuff the yeah. best who, place who is to, it? <laughs> um what who isn't Fair. If you're looking for free stuff, the best place to, or if you're looking for miniatures in general, the best place to look um, is a website called yegi.com. That's Y-E-G-G-I. And it's effectively like, it's a search engine for, for um, 3D printing files. Mm. So if you put in what you're looking for, it'll bring up literally everything that's out there. Well, almost everything that's out there um for you know that's free and paid so that's a great place to look um cool for fantasy i again most of for smaller scale stuff like war master scale or you know six millimeter eight millimeter scale you, there's a lot of fun stuff you can find online and I've built whole War Master. Ar I've 3D printed whole War Master armies out of free files. That's what. With 20 millimeter stuff, it's honestly much more you get what you pay for. Got it. So. I was going to say, um, most of the people I know with the 3D printer end up printing six millimeter or War Master stuff, you know, just at yep. some points. I don't know what. Yeah, you know, the files are free or readily available, or or why yep. why that is. 
Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can pay for, and there's a lot of free stuff that's also amazing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Well, let's get into the community type aspect mm -hmm. you were talking about. And then, uh, but before we do that, yeah, I'm sure we are missing somebody out there. And each one of these creators, we were only kind of just saying off the top of the head what factions we had. So I know for sure we missed some stuff for each one of them. So this is just the yeah. tip, tip of the iceberg and, and oh. go on and investigate and take a look at these guys because um, they have yeah. a lot more than what we were we were talking yeah. about. And definitely post below if we're missing some, mm -hmm. some good files out there or creators. And yeah. uh, let's be a resource. But um, yeah. so, yeah. So I hope... 3D printing and building a, a Saga community. So how, what's the connection there? How, how are you making this happen? Yeah, so basically I got the local, like 3D printing was a massively useful tool for me when I was trying to get a Saga community in Santa Cruz going. Um, the first game of Saga I played with someone in Santa Cruz I was talking with a with a friend who I played some other games with, and he said, "Oh yeah, I've always wanted to try Saga," and I asked him, "Okay, well yeah, I've got some miniatures. We'll bring them bring them by. What do you want to play?" And I listed the books I had, and he said, "Oh, can we play Age of Hannibal? I'd I'd love to, you know, I'd love to play. Um, I've always wanted to play Romans," and I said, "Okay, let's do that." And at the time, I had I did not have I had a Greek warband in plastic. I did not have a Roman warband. So in the space of about a week, I printed and painted a um, I forget if it was a four point or a six point Roman warband to have a game with. And then wow, I think it was yeah. four point And then, uh, I added a couple more points to that. And then, um, you know, a few weeks later at a 4th of July barbecue, I was talking with a couple of guys and they said, Oh yeah, saga that, that sounds good. So, you know, I brought out my Roman and Greek armies. We had a, or we, you know, they had, they came over to my place mm -hmm. Roman and, you know, I brought out my Roman and Greek armies. We played a game and then that kind of started things. So it's That's really been a case of um, when I when I got it started, I it was I was able to have opposing armies from the same book or 3D printing made it easier to have opposing armies from the same book for people to play with. And then, you know, with for Age of Magic, two of the guys who started playing, they started collecting their own. Well, three of the guys started collecting their own armies. So it, it was a way to generate interest and get things started. And then people got started with their own thing. That's so, cool. yeah, let's just yeah. strike strike when the iron was hot, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, worked out. There was Romans there and you 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 went the extra mile and painted them. But you could see even just. Oh, yeah you know, printing them straight on their, their bases or whatever, mm -hmm. where, you know, you wouldn't even have to spend time assembling them or anything yeah. like that. You know, they're just ready to go. Uh, but, mm -hmm. but you went ahead and painted them as well. Yeah. So I think that's cool. Yeah. And I think too, with the, like the low cost, um, you can give stuff away or, you know, entice folks, however, however you need to, uh, there where you can loan somebody, that 3d printed roman army and mm -hmm. you know if that guy just disappeared never came back you know it'd be annoying but like, you know it's not a like, huge but I'll, I'll print out another army a huge so. investment yeah so th there's that aspect to it so um yeah. i think that that's cool that is yeah. uh um handy i think for you know we kind of touched on it before you know a lot of game stores don't have the historical stuff on the walls and so you're mm -hmm. with having the prints um you know you become a resource then where yeah you say well 
you say what they're interested in, you know, I want some Normans or whatever, but how do I get them? Now, Normans, there are a lot of kits out there, but um, we can think of Huns or something like that. Yeah. Or Spanish. Um, you know, there's not specific kits for those, but you yeah. say, okay, yeah, well, we can, we'll, we'll figure that out. I'll hook you up. It looks like there's something out there and we'll get you set up. Um, well, so, yeah. So you, you got them on the hook. You're not, you know, you're just kind yeah. of not letting them off the line. It just kind of speeds things up, right? It's it's the difference between saying, you know, let's say you're trying to get a local Saga community going and you don't have the minis, they don't have the minis on the shelves. If you run an intro game for someone, they're, they're hooked. You can either say, yeah, go online. This is where you can order them from. The minis yeah. will, will arrive in like two to three weeks and then you can start painting them. Or you can say, right, you're interested. This, you know, this is where you get the files. Send them to me. I'll have a, you know, I'll have a war band ready for you. I'll have a war band printed out for you next week. Sure. It's you're like yeah. a eliminating hurdles, you know. Uh Yeah. It's you yeah. Know, barriers it's, to to entry. Yeah. Where, exactly. You, know, you got to get on Badger Games. Uh this is what you want to order. Um mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're a Saga Pro, yeah, you, know, you don't have any issues doing that sourcing your minis, but if you're a new person, no. You know, kind of used to GW experience or something out, you know, yeah. just coming from outside miniature games completely, you know, it might seem pretty archaic yeah. or bizarre that you can't get these. And so why, you know, why would you play Saga yeah. if you're having an issue yeah. with that? So I think yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Plus the other, another thing you can do, um, if you're running a tournament or you're running an event, then... You know, it's always nice to have a goodie bag of some sort. Oh, for yeah. Excellent you know, if, you can, if you've got a miniature that you can print out and give away or, you know, do some print out some special counters or something like that. Or, you know, a little objective marker. You know, that's really cool as well. By the way, you know, you can print you can, you know, print out uh, all, all the objective markers you'd need to host a tournament pretty quickly. Absolutely. Yeah, there's tons of like little villager type things and other random little icons, artifacts. I mean, we haven't really got into it, but you could print fatigue markers. I've mm -hmm. seen people print the actual saga dice themselves yep. out there, but I've done that actually. Has them. Do, do those dice like work work good? Do they feel good? Like rolling you know, in your hand? As Best as I can tell, so they're they're not. I mean, you know, dice that you get from a manufacturer are are. I think there's a special process to make sure they're balanced. I'm not sure that these are. They roll well enough. They seem random. They seem fairly well balanced. Mm -hmm. That said, I would I would I'd be happy to use them for a friendly game. I am not sure I would necessarily take them to a tournament. Okay, well that's an interesting right. point. Yeah, I guess in my event I've never seen anybody use them or nobody you know has broached that subject. That's a good yeah good question. Um, interesting, but um, yeah. Other things you can do, you can print out little trophies and stuff. So that's what, mm -hmm. so there's a local yeah. kind of a designer guy, uh, James at uh, Demi Dragon. He did mm -hmm. this uh, Viking trophy for us for all fathers. And he's helping me out with nice. a special miniature for uh, Fimble Winter. So you ah. got it's so much cool, cool stuff you can do. Have you yourself like, gotten into like modifying the files and stuff and like not necessarily like sculpting yourself or you know however mm -hmm. it's done in there but just kind of like converting things and stuff like that is is that doable for you have you you tried it i haven't i i haven't tried i haven't tried it yet um i'd like to i'd like to give it a go i um yeah, I'd like to give it a go at some point. Um, mostly because I'd like to try and modify some of the 
28 millimeter figure so I can print them at a like a 10 millimeter scale or something like that. So maybe make the weapons a bit more pronounced so I can Hmm. shrink them down without, you know, things becoming so thin Mm. they just (laughs) snap off if you blow them or something. But yeah, I supposedly it's pretty easy, even for someone who doesn't have a background in that. I haven't. It's something I'm going to give a a give a try at some point. So. Mm Awesome. Cool. Well, anything else you'd like to say about the, the 3D, printer, 3D printer and how it might help in building a Saga community? Yeah, I I mean, just to kind of sum up, I think if you're, if you're looking to get a Saga community started where you live and if you don't have easy a store with easy access to miniatures or if you don't have access to a store at all, honestly, get a 3D printer. That is probably going to be the one of the best things you can do for yourself to get a community started because you can print out as many armies as you need, as many armies as people want to paint. So if you're trying to, if you're trying to get a Saga community started, that's a great resource to have. Um, if you're an individual gamer and you think you're the kind of person, as I think many, many of us are, who is likely to do multiple warbands and do them, <laughs> you know, do multiple warbands in a year, a 3D printer is also a worth, uh, a 3D printer will pay for itself very quickly in terms of the, the minis you can crank out. So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, Saga is as cheap as it gets um but even then you know i'm trying to remember when monty and i did the cost analysis um i want to say something like 75 to 125 dollars was the typical range for a war band yeah so if you're only just going to build one war band (laughs) and never do anything else ever you know it makes sense to buy it but then um when you're doing two war band you know so that's 150 to yeah. 300 bucks and like well if you can get the whole setup for 350 it only takes a couple war bands to kind of you know make make your money back so mm-hmm. um yeah it's it's getting harder and harder not to just yeah. pick one up but um yeah yeah so yeah so that's kind of the two that's like just what I would, you know, add just to sum up. Plus, if you get, I guess, one more thing. If you're someone who plays Saga and you want to give other games a try as well, if you have other pro- games that you play in addition to Saga, it's worth having a 3D printer just because it makes that so much easier. Like, you know, I can build a Saga Warband one month and then pivot and do a a war master army the next for example so like if mm-hmm. if you know if you're a renaissance gamer it's definitely worth having a printer as well absolutely yeah i saw the bolt action stuff as i was searching on here so if you're a man of multi-games um definitely makes sense um yeah all right well looks like we temporarily lost your your video here just in the last yeah, I don't 20, know what happened there. 20 seconds here. Uh, okay. But we're at the, the end of the video anyway, so no worries. So I just want to thank uh, all the, the Saga patrons out there. Terry, Patrick, Sean, Mitchell, Kevin, and Scott. Wouldn't be doing these additional videos without you guys. And I know that a ton of you guys already have the 3D printers and are using them. So definitely give us your feedback on what you heard today um if there's other manufacturers out there other printers other tools you'd recommend anything we missed other resources for getting started um it's definitely can be daunting at first i think it'll definitely you have to put in some time uh figuring everything out but it sounds like the rewards are are well worth it and you are we got you back for for the ending here, so awesome! Well, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for yeah. for coming on, Chris, and suggesting yeah. this topic. I, I found it very interesting and was keen to to hear what you had to say. And uh, yeah, another 
I'm another step closer to getting that printer myself after. Oh, I was after, hoping I'd push you over the edge over when the you ad. get it. Well, and get, but oh, well. Yeah, I've got a lot of stuff. Yeah. That is already here that needs to be painted. So I know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I would be spitting on those models if I bought the printer right now uh, to yeah. print out other stuff that is just going to sit in the queue. <laughs> so um, definitely, I know there'll probably be a, a pause or lull at some point where it'll just make sense yeah. for the, the next war band to, to be something that I print myself. So uh, awesome. Well, thanks again, Chris. Uh, hopefully we haven't seen the last of you. And uh Best of luck with everything going on over there. So you're in California, Santa Santa Cruz area. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. Okay. Santa Cruz. If people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do so, do you think? Yeah. Um, so I think you can always there's... find me on Facebook. That's Chris Henze, H-A-E-N-Z-E. Um, so you know, if you're looking to get into Saga, is... or sorry, if you're looking to yeah, there is Sorry? a. I think there is a, a Santa Cruz Facebook group. There is right? that as well. There's okay. yeah, Santa yeah. Cruz Saga. That's us. If you're yeah, if you if you're in if you're in the area, um, and want a game, just put something on the page. We'll find right. a table for you. Find you there. Awesome. All right, man. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. Uh, hopefully, see you again. Have a good one. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a good one. Bye bye. Saga like to see more saga content consider joining the heathen army over on patreon or popping on down to the saga doors day discord server links below thanks guys